Hey, what is up, guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here back with another Market Watch episode. Today, we're taking a little bit more of a forward look on things as we have a couple of big changes coming up. Obviously, the really big thing is the 2024 ban list because that's really going to define the next few months of competitive play. But of course, we have products like the 2024 Megatons coming out, and we should also look ahead to Rage of the Abyss as well. The cards we're talking about today are ones that you should definitely be keeping an eye on moving forward over the next few weeks, as I'm expecting these to see some notable price movement moving forward. Let's get started. Kicking things off, we're talking about a couple of cards from the Infinite Forbidden, and the first one here is LZ of the White Forest. Now, the White Forest archetype debuted in the Infinite Forbidden, and I think that the Fiendsmith cards make it really easy to forget about the White Forest cards. However, White Forest did have three secrets in the set, and a lot of the cards are actually really strong. There's a couple of different variants that are running around right now. I think Joshua Schmidt made top 64 at the Euro Nationals with Runic White Forest, and a lot of other players are running the Toy and Centurion cards as well. The deck hasn't really done too great competitively though. I think that the assumption here has to be that after the next ban list, Snake Eye cards are going to be out of the format, and White Forest has a lot of top tier potential. It seems that a lot of players think that too, as we saw LZ spike in price over the last couple of days. This card is really amazing. You send a spell or trap from your hand or field to the graveyard, then special summon this card and search for a White Forest monster, and it also has an effect to add itself from the graveyard back to your hand during your opponent's turn as well. Now this card and Esteller are the two secret rare main deck monsters for the White Forest theme. Esteller was priced a little bit higher at 30, while Alzette was down at around 20, around 25-ish. However, LZ has overtaken a stellar and now sits at $35 for the secret rare, while the quarter century version has also jumped from around 65 to 70 to now being a $95 card as well. If you guys are planning on playing White Forest next format, you may want to look at grabbing the cards now as there is definitely a solid chance that they could continue to go up if they do become meta relevant after the ban list. The other card from the Infinite Forbidden that I want to talk about today is Fiendsmith's Tract. So the Fiendsmith cards are obviously what everyone's looking for from the Infinite Forbidden, but the prices have been a little bit weird here. Engraver is obviously a 3 of, but most of the other Fiendsmith cards are actually just 1 ofs, so the ones that are in lower rarities don't really matter that much price-wise. Now what's interesting is Requiem, it's just a 1 of, we knew that going into the release of the Infinite Forbidden, so that's coming in at $2 each, but Tract is a little bit different. Over in the OCG, for the most part, Tract is something that's generally played at 2, but here in the TCG, for like Snake Eye Fiendsmith, which has been like the really dominant deck that's been abusing the Fiendsmith engine, we've mostly been seeing Tract at 1. Of course, it is searchable with Engraver, and having fewer of them means you are less likely to have a dead card in your hand if your opponent is playing Droll and Lockbird. However, despite just being a 1 of here, I was pretty surprised to see that Tract is still at $11 per copy, which is a lot more than Requiem, despite both of the cards being played at the same number in the Fiendsmith Snake Eye strategy. I think that this might be a nod to players picking up multiple copies of Tract regardless, in case the deck evolves following the ban list, such that everyone is running two copies of Tract all of a sudden, and who knows, right, if Beatrice gets hit and we see the Fiendsmith cards maybe slightly played less because there's not as much Fiendsmith Snake Eye and it's being played with other things, or it's only being played in specific strategies, maybe Tract does become a two of and it suddenly becomes like a $20 secret, or maybe Fiendsmith Magical Musketeer suddenly becomes the best deck to abuse the Fiendsmith cards and all of a sudden it's a three of and then Tract becomes really expensive. This one, it's going to take a bit of guesswork, right, since we don't know what next format is going to look like, but if you have engravers and the rest of the Fiendsmith engine, I would say that you guys are better off being safe, just pick up a set of Tract in case you end up needing to run the card in multiples. Alright, so we're getting a little more forward looking here, I want to talk about Tenpai Dragon Pydra. So this card is of course one of the best cards in the Tenpai Dragon deck, as on summon it can search for either summoning or Kaiman, so it can provide a ton of protection, or it can basically set up an OTK all on its own. Now personally, I'm not really a big fan of Tenpai Dragons and their playstyle, but in general I know a ton of players like to run the deck. Because it's cheap, it's good to put together, and it's actually pretty viable. However, there's one expensive card for the deck that prevents players from building it, and that is Trident Dragion, a card that only has a couple of printings that are quite old. This is remedied, however, after the 2024 tins, where Trident Dragion is going to get a reprint that should make the card extremely affordable. 
At the same time, let's remember that when Legacy of Destruction came out, Pyjra was literally like a $20 super rare, absolutely ridiculous. It's cooled down over time though, and right now we have Pyjra at around $8 to $10, much more reasonable but still pretty high for a super rare. Now the reason I want to bring this card up is that I think we will see a huge spike in the price of Pydra after the tins drop, and I definitely think you guys should consider picking up some copies of Pydra now. Trident Dragion is such a big obstacle for players that want to play Tenpai Dragons. I think that like, locally you probably don't have too many people with extra Trident Dragons running around in their binder, so just finding the card can be difficult. However, if you have someone that has all the hand traps because of the last few products and then they now have Trident Dragon, the rest of the Tenpai Dragon cards are basically all supers and commons and then you have Genroku as an ultra, so I think that Pydra does have a good chance of seeing a ton of demand after the tins drop and so I would expect it to jump back up to like 15 maybe $20. Now the one other thing I will say is that I actually expect Pydra to be an OTS tournament pack ultimate rare. I don't know why, it's just a feeling and it would be like consistent with the way that Konami has selected a lot of other ultimate rares that we've gotten, like Snake Eye, Ash, Rhino Heart, Kashtura, Fenrir, I feel like Pydra's in the same vein. I say this of course assuming that Tenpai Dragons won't get obliterated on the upcoming ban list, which should be pretty safe since they're an incredibly new archetype that might just get like a small slap on the wrist. But yeah, I don't know for sure, so take this with a grain of salt, think for you guys as selves, but based on what we've seen with the market in the past, Pydras might be a decent pickup over the next month or so leading up to this year's tins. Up next, I want to touch on Lancia, Ancestral Dragon of the Ice Mountain. So this is a level 10 synchro monster that requires the tuner to be a water monster. Of course, for the most part when we talk about Lancia, we really only have thought about it in Ice Barriers, which got support in Terminal Revenge. However, this card might be worth looking at because of the Mermail Atlantean strategy. Mermails get a ton of new support coming in Rage of the Abyss, and while the cards I don't think are anything really that game-breaking, they're still a really strong deck and they can make use of all the different water support that we've had over the last few years. One notable tech option for Mermails is Ice Jade Ran Agrin, which can turn into a level 10 synchro by itself, though of course, the downside of running this package with Lancia is that the Floodgate monsters you would be summoning off of Lancia's effect become bricks. However, water decks usually do have a lot of effects where you have to send water monsters to the graveyard as cost and Lancia can still special summon those monsters out of the graveyard so drawing those bricks isn't completely horrible. Anyways, Lancia was a short printed card in Terminal Revenge so it was relatively difficult to pull. Because of this early on, Lancia had actually already seen a price spike. It came out at around $5 each, it jumped up pretty soon after to a peak of $15, now the card has settled back to about $8 since Ice Barriers obviously aren't doing too much in the meta, however, Mermails actually were played and took first place at a big 3v3 tournament over in Japan, and while they weren't anywhere else in like the top 8 spots, maybe it's a sign that the deck has solid potential and could be good here in the TCG. Right now, at only $8, I feel like this card is extremely affordable, has good upward potential, and shouldn't see a reprint anytime soon, so it's definitely something I would consider actively looking to pick up at your locals, especially if you can get it just for trades. So here's a pretty small one, it's Bistial Baldrake. Shout out to my buddy Darren DL for letting me know about this one a couple of weeks ago actually. So one big trend that we've seen after the NAWCQ and European Nationals is Bistials being played in the main board. The Fiendsmith engine is absolutely everywhere, so Bistials being able to hit Lurie out of the graveyard as well as Engraver itself can really limit the end boards that they put together. Now a lot of the time, we just see players playing the one Magnema and one Druid's Worm, but we're starting to see more and more lists that are opting to run Baldrake. Baldrake is probably the best one to see alongside another Bistial. If your opponent special summons a monster that's a Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Ixies, or Link, you can tribute another light or dark monster that you control to banish one of those special summon monsters. So if you're going second, you need like a Phantasme or another Bistial on the field to make use of this effect, but if you can get there, it's really, really devastating. Drawing Baldrake with another Bistial basically means that your two cards have now become three different points of interaction. Now this card had its common printing, which is dirt cheap, but we also want to make note here of the Ultra Rares from Battles of Legend Monstrous Revenge. This card was basically a bulk holo, only 25 50 cents, but over the last couple of weeks there has been a ton of copies moving on TCG Player, and the card is up to a dollar already, which is a lot for what was basically considered bulk before. 
Monstrous Revenge is also a pretty old set by now, so you probably just don't see too many of this card just floating around in people's binders randomly. I think that this isn't something I'd want to pay cash for at a dollar. The card has to basically double in price for you to sell it for more, which is hard for a card that's already a dollar when there's so many copies floating around on the market. Though if you can still get this card for like 25 cents or something, I'd probably just buy all of them. This is something that you'd ideally be trading some bulk cards for that you otherwise wouldn't be able to move for a card that has some decent potential in terms of price and also very strong meta implications. Moving on, we have DDD Wave High King Caesar. So this card is one of the craziest Dixies monsters in the game, in my opinion. I played Unchained back in Unchained format, and when you drop this card against someone who doesn't realize that it isn't a once per turn, it can be really devastating. But yeah, this card can detach a material to negate a card or effect that would special summon a monster. It also does search for a dark contract if it goes from the field to the graveyard. Not really relevant in the game right now. This card does require two level 6 fiend monsters to make, however the fiendsmith engine actually makes this pretty easy to achieve, so Caesar is a card that should always be accessible for any deck running the fiendsmith engine. The problem however is that the extra deck space for a lot of decks right now is just way too tight, I think a lot of them are running just Beatrice, and Caesar is really just more of a luxury if you have the room, and even then it has to compete with something like Constellar Ptolemy M7. However, I do think that this upcoming ban list we should be seeing Beatrice banned, so there will be a chance for Caesar to make an appearance in the meta once again. This card has just two super rare printings, it was a super rare in Code of the Duelist and then OTS Tournament Pack 24. I don't know why, but the Code of the Duelist supers are 4 to $5 each on TCG Player, while the OTS ones are only $2 each, kind of backwards since usually the OTS versions are higher. I think maybe it's because the OTS ones look like they could just be unlimited Code of the Duelist printing, so who knows. But yeah, stay away from those original ones, I just offload them if you can find someone who wants to upgrade because they're worth more for whatever reason. If you are playing Fiendsmith, even if you're not running this card right now, make sure that you at least own a copy of it. I think that the OTS pack version is a good card to trade for if you can at your locals. And finally, the last card I want to talk about for today is Cosmic Blazar Dragon. So this card is a level 12 synchro monster, basically it can negate any card effect or summon by banishing itself until the end phase. Obviously this is a really powerful effect, and the card is usually quite difficult to bring out, but you're able to cheat it out of the extra deck by using Crimson Dragon. I believe that right now Centurions are the only engine that players are using to access Crimson Dragon and this card, and then by extension White Forest can use it as well. This card is already making its way into a decent amount of Centurion extra decks, though that deck isn't exactly top tier, however we are getting some new Centurion cards in Rage of the Abyss. The other thing is that I think a lot of players are expecting King Calamity to be banned on this upcoming ban list, since it's just a turn skip for no reason, and so players are looking to pick up their Cosmic Blazar Dragons as a solid alternative to run in the extra deck, and this has caused the Duelist Saga Ultras to jump up to $20 each. Now to be fair, the Ultras look really nice, I've always thought that the Duelist Saga Ultras were really underrated, they have this really nice ripple effect to them, and the only other alternative for this card is the Common, which is dirt cheap, but it really doesn't look that great. However, I would actually probably just suck it up and play with the Common for now. I actually think that Blazar Dragon could be one of the cards to get a Quarter Century upgrade in either the Tins or that Quarter Century Bonanza pack, so I wouldn't want to hold on to too many copies of this card in high rarity for now. Alright guys, that is all I have for today's episode. I know it's a little bit like speculative, it's not really anything or too much to go off of like recent movements, but I did want to share with you guys some of my thoughts, especially with all of these things changing. It's always interesting to see and sort of try to guess where the market is going to go to in the near future, and hopefully we're right and we're able to make a few bucks out of it. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch episode, please make sure you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already and until next time guys don't forget to hold on to your mst.tv